my show is titled California Scapes, and I named it that because I have a lot of landscapes and I have a lot of seascapes, and I also thought that painting is a good escape. Uh, landscape painting is um, um, something you can look at that is beautiful and kind of takes you away from the turmoil of the world. When I grew up, I spent a lot of time camping with my family. Since I've been grown, I've, I have a group of friends and we go backpacking. I've hiked up mostly in the Eastern Sierras. When I backpack, I take watercolors with me because that's, that's what you can manage. Uh, you know, when you're carrying everything on your back, you can't carry a big oil painting setup. So I've taken watercolors up there and um, just done little watercolor studies. But it also helps you um, remember, it gives you a color study and it helps you remember the scene better than a photograph actually. So uh, my husband and I also camp in the Eastern Sierras and I've taken my oil painting set up in that case because I have a car and I have you know, a lot of little studies of, of um, some of the scenes of the Eastern Sierras that are done in oil. And then I take my photograph combined with the study that I've done on location and um, I'm able to work up a bigger painting uh, in my studio at home. The things that catch my eye usually has to do with the lighting. With that painting, there were a lot of clouds in the sky, so there was very interesting lighting. The best time to paint really is early in the morning or in the late afternoon, which is not when I go hiking. So sometimes the clouds really help, and they um, then you get the colors in the shadows, and um, um, oftentimes we go at, you know, during the autumn when there are, the trees turn color, that's always, I mean, I love the mountains, so it's almost always beautiful to me, but the, but the lighting is, is um, what makes a particular scene catch my eye. When I'm painting a scene outdoors, it's very overwhelming. I mean, you, you go to the scene, and it, I mean, especially in the mountains, there's beauty all around you. And um, picking exactly what you want to paint is perhaps the hardest part. So you have to kind of, you know, get yourself a little, um, you know, hold your fingers up and, and frame a scene for yourself. And then think about what makes a good composition. And um, one of my instructors did say, think about five big shapes. And when, when you're doing location work, that's especially important because um, when you try to paint everything, it's always way too much. You usually work on a, a tiny little canvas, and you have to be very selective about what you put in. Um, beginning artists almost always try to paint everything, which is almost always a mistake. And I'm, I've been there too. Um, when I'm out there, um, I try to eliminate a lot and pick the very important things and paint just a small portion. Um, the color, I do um, exaggerate a bit sometimes. Um, that's, you know, otherwise why not just take a photograph and have that be my artwork. If the light is warm on a scene, then the shadows are usually cooler. If the light is cool, then the shadows are usually warmer. So you can look at it and you can usually detect that um, with experience when you're looking at a scene. But if you can't, then that's the direction that you go in, um, especially if it's midday when it's not necessarily um, so obvious. With plein air painting, you almost always work small and you paint as quickly as possible because the light changes so quickly. And then um, often what I do then is take a photograph at the same time and take the plein air painting home with me and work up a larger painting um, in my studio. Sometimes the paintings that I do on location are finished and I love them. Oftentimes they aren't finished and I don't love them at all. Um, usually I like them better after I get, I mean, I almost always hate what I do when I'm out there. And then I get it home and I look at it in my studio and, I, and then I realize that I kind of did capture the feeling that, was, that I had when I was painting it. And um, maybe only a dab or two will make it into a really nice piece of painting. Um, most of my plein air works I don't frame, I don't sell, they're, they're used for reference, my own reference, so that they don't have to be a finished work of art. They are something that triggers my memory and allows me to make a finished work of art uh, combined with my photograph.
the painting of the marsh was done from a trip that I took to Mendocino, and I was painting on location um, for quite a while. I was painting the ocean and a different scene, and then I turned around and I saw this beautiful marsh, and the lighting was so perfect. I took a photo and I worked that up in my studio. The, uh, because I was near the ocean, it was very misty, and that painting is done in pastel. I was kind of new to pastel when I did it. It's one of my, um, one of my early ones. And choosing the color for the background was, you know, it's different from oils because you have a limited, you have a set of pastels and you have to find the color. You can't just mix the color. So I searched through my pastels and I, I came on that and I think I, I really hit on something. It was a beautiful um, misty day and I also have the dark contrast in the foreground, um, which, which brings the foreground forward and it pushes the trees in the background back. So that, that is one of my favorite paintings. Sometimes it's what you leave out. I mean, you know, I mean, a, a scene like that, of course, if you looked at those foreground grasses, you would see um, many, many grasses. It's, you would see an awful lot of detail in that foreground. Um, if I painted it that way, it would be very distracting. And so, so I think one of the major things in art is knowing what to omit, what to leave out um, in order to uh, produce a pleasing painting, unlike a photograph. A photograph will give you er detail everywhere. You know, you'll have detail in the foreground, you'll have detail in the background. Um, if you were to duplicate that in a painting, um, it's very flat like a photograph. And as an artist, I think plein air painting, the value of plein air painting is it, it teaches you how to um, capture the space. And then when you work from your photograph, you can realize the limitations of the photograph and put your plein air experience to work to help make the painting work. One of the challenges of painting in the Sierras is that the sky often is unrealistically blue and the mountains are uh, very sharply defined. If you paint them exactly like that, the mountains are right up front and then, and it's hard to it's hard to push them back. I think in my mountain paintings, sometimes you do have a clear outline in the back, but oftentimes that would be a softer edge than you actually see in nature, because it, the mountains have to stay back there. Otherwise, you know, they sometimes you want them in front. You know, there are some paintings that I've done where the mountains are the focus and um, all the detail is important. But in most cases, especially that bishop painting over there. I wanted the mountains to be back, and um, so they're, it's, they're perhaps not as clear as they would actually be in real life. The painting with the, um, we call that Alpenglow, the orange, um, the orange peaks, that one, that was the focus. So they're perhaps, they're the bright part, um, but that was what I was wanting to emphasize in that painting. And the, the one between the two, the, um, that is from Onion Valley, um, when you drive up from Independence, and I took my, um, my zoom lens, I did not paint on location, that is just a very, you know, you look all around and there's mountains all around you from Onion Valley, and that is a tiny little section of it where I thought the, um, the mountain peaks were especially dramatic. So, so in that case, the mountains are the focus in that painting also.